live with that. Okay, so for pure educational purposes, there is no lights on right now. So I do have the A7S III jacked up to its second native ISO of 12,800. And I have my Sekonic 800 here, and I'm gonna show you what I do in any environment where I know we want to use or build off of the natural light that's already there. So in this scenario, I do have a big window here. It's not uh, blasted with front sunlight. It's just kind of ambient light, and it doesn't really shift because the sun has already moved over there, okay, and it stays there for the rest of the day. So it's not like we're gonna get a sudden uh, shift of exposure in here. It always maintains like this. I know that. I've lived here for like six or seven years now. I know that the light is very consistent here from 9 a.m. until around uh, right before golden hour, okay, the last hour of the day. I know if I want to build off of this natural light, uh, we're going to utilize it, and this happens a lot on documentary jobs, corporate jobs. First thing I do is before any film lights get turned on, I'm going to walk in here and I'm going to take a reading from roughly where where we think talent will be, which in this case is me, right? So, um, and I have my meter like this, okay? And I can flip it around and this little bubble here, if you don't know anything about meters, this represents the human face, okay? So I'm gonna take the reading towards the main window here and we're just gonna see what it is. Now we know, as it says on here, 4,317 Kelvin is what is happening to the light and the color as soon as it hits right here. Now, if you wanna get as accurate as possible, this is where uh, you need to understand how to use this iconic color meter. So up here is, uh, you'll see a little window up here that says target. That is your target color temperature. And right now it's 4350, but if I want to get it as close to a neutral temperature of what uh, the window is, you say, why is he balancing to the window temperature wise, color temperature wise? The reason is, is because this is the old adage taken from ASC where you have to balance to what we cannot control. And a lot of people th sometimes think like that just means exposure wise. So let's balance exposure wise to what we cannot control. Well, if you're someone like me that tries to get the image as close as possible on the day, and by that I also mean color, okay, because as something like this A7S III, it doesn't shoot raw. So because of that, you know, I don't like to play around with color too much. But even when I am shooting on my red Komodo, um, I still like to get the color as close as possible on the day, right? So again, balancing to what we cannot control, the old ASC adage. If you don't know what ASC is, it's the American Society of Cinematographers. Uh, I, I, Lord help you if you don't, if that's the first time you've heard that, uh, you should subscribe to that publication immediately if you care at all about, um, you know, what's going on in the world of high level cinematography, uh, quote unquote, industry standard, right? I would hope that we're getting our knowledge from other places other than yahoos like me here on YouTube. So this is what we're doing. Okay, so I'm going to take the target color temperature and I'm going to change that to 4300. Now, the reason why you want to do that, if that's, again, we're balancing what we cannot control, now it's gonna tell me what I need to dial in tint-wise, the tint shift, uh, because here you'll see the CCI, it says 0.5M. That means it's telling me to add half magenta uh, to make up for the slight green shift that is happening here if I want to get as accurate, as close as possible to that target color temperature of 4,300 Kelvin, okay? So that means if you have a camera that can dial in tint, not all cameras can, I understand that, but certainly the A7S III does. It even has the RGB kind of a tone map for color tone. You can easily add in 0.5 magenta. Now, if you wanna get as accurate as possible, if you have a camera like the A7S III, you can go into your menu here and you can go to the white balance corrector menu down here on the bottom. You can tap that. If you are a Sony user, this is gonna look very familiar to you. Certainly A7S III users, uh, I believe even the GH5, if I can recall correctly from my GH5 days, this had one of those as well. And this is gonna show you exactly where to map that. We're just slightly going off of the amber and we're just slightly in, in the magenta world. Again, that's if you're trying to get as neutral as possible, as closely matched to this 4300 Kelvin. And, and I purposely have not changed it correctly in camera in here. What I'm going to do now is before, again, before I turn on the film light, because this is also gonna help me for my main key light to match it to what the window is giving me, okay? So now I'm gonna go to my ca ca camera here and I'm gonna put in the 4300 Kelvin and I'm gonna put in that white balance correction of half magenta and we'll see what it does without any lights going on first. And I'm gonna slightly take it off of the, go towards amber, 0.5 amber too, because that's the way it was on the, uh, on the meter here. So if we can focus, 
whatever this is showing me, I got that pretty accurate and close to what's on my camera here. So now we instantly have a more uh, neutral look balanced to what is coming off the window. Now what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna turn on my little key light here, which for the sake of this video, it's just a, um, a little small rig RC220B, right? I've done a full review on that. The light, um, it's okay. I keep it in the studio because it's for the most part accurate. As long as you don't go under like 3000 Kelvin, it's very, very accurate. Once you go into those 2000 Kelvin range, it gets really nasty and we saw that in the review, uh, but it has very high output on its own. Pretty equivalent to an Aperture 300D, let's be honest, the Mark II, let's be honest. Uh, but I do have the, speaking of Aperture, I do have the 2X Fresnel on there because I'm just kind of blasting it into the ceiling for the sake of this video. So I'm gonna turn that on and using my color meter, I am gonna dial it in at 4300 Kelvin. I might sit right here where the light is. Now it is uh, quite a bit overexposed, but not too bad. I mean, this is enough. We could crunch it down a little bit in post. So I'm gonna take a reading now and see where we got. So now it's uh, 4165. So um, we're a little under, right? I wanna get it closer to that 4300. In real time here, I'm gonna go 2000 degrees colder. So I'm actually gonna put it on 4,500. And you know, 200 degrees isn't a lot, but if we wanna try to get it as accurate as possible, and now we're at 4,270. So 4,270, we're very dang close to that 4,300. And now I can do a little shot here directly to camera down the barrel. And uh, we got 4,243, and it is telling me to add uh, 0.2 magenta, a little bit of magenta to get closer to that 4300, but we know that I already have half magenta in camera. Maybe to help it get a little closer, oh boy, and we'll go 4600 on the small rig light there. Let's see if how close we can get. This is tedious, I know, and some people say this is doesn't matter. There we go. Now we're at 4332 Kelvin. Now it's saying just to add 0.1 magenta. So if I go back to my white balance corrector here, You'll have to forgive the flare, the glare. There you can see we're even more spot on now. So now I can go to my camera and kind of readjust that because again, I'm doing everything to what I cannot control here. We may have got ahead of ourselves because our exposure is a little hot. I always jump the gun on this because you're gonna to wanna to take another color reading after you get your exposure correctly. And this happens a lot on set because what happens is you'll be doing this stuff and then the talent will come in and you go, oh, they're, they're darker than our key grip when he was standing in for us or whatever the case may be, right? So you quickly have to adjust exposure. When you do that, you are gonna to have to take another color reading because anytime you change the dimmer on any light, um, certainly LEDs, it's going to drastically change the color temp. Um, again, a lot of people think this is uh, highly tedious or whatever, but for me, I think it's the more time I can save on the back end because I'm not a professional color greatest. I'm not a professional editor, as we all know here on this YouTube channel, right? It's just, and also it's something that I don't desire to do. I'd rather be out on the street, walking around taking street photos than sitting at a computer trying to fix the color on some stupid corporate video that I did. And they're not gonna, they're not paying me to spend all those extra hours fixing the color right? Because that's something that should have been fixed on the day, quite frankly. So we're going to change this to 12,800 just for the sake. And I'm going to pop the ball out and I'm going to do it directly down the barrel here and see what we got. Holy cannoli. So with those settings, I am getting almost uh, an F16, <laughs> right? So I'm, I'm a little bit hot here. As you can tell, it's, it's quite hot. And when I go with the dome in, if I want to see exactly what these lights are giving me, uh, now I am definitely getting an F16. So I am going to have to either try the ISO down to like something more uh, better, like 800, more realistic, um, or I can just drop the level of the light down. Okay, this is looking better already. Now we brought in the contrast. Now I do have a quarter pro mist on the lens, uh, so that you got to take that into consideration too. So now what am I getting down the barrel? Let's go down the barrel first. Still getting that F11, right? So in my scenario, it might be better just to drop down to a more usable ISO, something that's not so insane, I'll drop back down to uh, 800 ISO because this lens is my broadcast cine servo zoom lens, so it is only an f4. Let's see if I'm at an f4, and you'll see now. You know, it just depends. What's the mood you're going for here, right? Uh, and now I got a 2/8 split, damn near an f4. I'm gonna give a little bit more level out of this, and here we go, here we go again, because I'm shooting at f4, right? So I'm gonna do it straight to the barrel. 
Yeah, 2 8 split. I'm not quite getting that 100, but let's see what the light source directly is giving me. So I am getting a four split on this key side. So four split key side, which is pretty good. And then straight down the barrel with bulb out is almost a four. So that's pretty decent. And if I'm looking here on my waveform, I can see that, you know, I'm living right around that 50 line and that's right where I want to be. You know, you can see that 50 line there. Uh, that's pretty good. You know, I don't like to push it beyond that, but again, that depends on, on the mood, right? You kind of saw how you could go super high key or whatever. But now just for kicks, let's see how much that changed our color temperature here. Again, this seems like it's tedious and it's taking a long time, but the reality is it's not, right? These are things you're doing the last 10%. There we go. And we're, we're even closer to 4,300 now. Now we're getting 4,289 and only 0.1 magenta. So, so we're really, really nice there. We have shifted a little bit towards the blue side though. So I am gonna fix that really quick. And this is where my OCD gets a hold of me. So if we look at the Sony where we had it, A.5 and M2.5, but you can see what they're recommending now is just still a little bit of magenta, but we need to lean it more towards the blue side. And so here we go. We're just gonna go 0.5 and we're gonna leave magenta at 0.25 because as you'll see there, there's no in between. So we'll just split the difference there. And maybe, maybe right here, we'll do a little side-by-side -side action and see how that goes. And yeah, and then if we really wanted to test the accuracy of it, I have my little handy dandy Color Checker Passport Video Pro. We can do one of these and we can see how close it looks uh, taking the neutral colors off of this card, right? Which is, you know, the gray card. So maybe we'll do a side-by-side, -side. maybe we'll do a three side-by-side -side comparison there, uh, balancing to each one. Um, now you'd say, what would you do if you didn't have your meters? I, I honestly don't know. I, I don't know. I guess I could just uh, get on the camera and scroll through the white balance until I see something I think I like. Uh, however, if you guys follow this channel for a long time, you know that I have a uh, red-green color deficiency uh, in my eyeballs. I have a red-green hue deficiency. So it is a thing I battle with. That was the whole reason why I invested in this Siconic 800, right? And, and this little guy. So if I didn't have the meters, I guess I would scroll through and because of my eyeballs, I would have to get second, maybe third, maybe four opinions on it, uh, depending on how much I trust the crew around me, right? I mean, I use my color checker all the time, but we would most certainly have to, oh, you want to make sure to hold it like this. Uh, you, you, I would certainly want to fly this in um, because if I don't have my color meter even I even even use this with my color meter but even it without it now one thing I didn't do before I did all of this is I didn't calibrate this so if I you know if we have a lot of time digging around and said I go oh I didn't calibrate this because these these uh, color meters are just like a camera right so anytime you enter a new uh, condition a new space a new setting a new set whatever you want to call it it's always gonna have a different temperature and not color temperature I mean like the physical temperature of the space you're in. So anytime you go from inside to outside or vice versa, or just from like a factory to a home, anything, just like you would, you should be black shading, ca calibrating, whatever you want to call it. Every camera has the ability to do that. Well, the Sekonic color meter has the ability to do that as well. So if I go, oh shoot, I didn't calibrate it. So real quick, we'll just calibrate this thing and you do it by, you know, turning this knob. So you just turn that all the way down. It says, uh, perform the dark calibration. You just say yes. And so that'll calibrate real quick. Not super quick, but it's certainly quicker than my red Komodo. Let's just say that. I do that with most cameras, even for stills. You know, if I go and shoot stills, I try to, I try to um, perform some, and, and almost every camera has it except Leica's. Leica's only recently started adding it to their menus and they started it with the M11. All digital Leicas before the M11, there's no way to do your own uh, camera calibration, black shade, whatever you want to call it. There's no way to do it on any Leica camera until the M11. And I found that out just because of situations, research that I've done on my own. Okay, so now I've calibrated it. So just for the sake of it, let's see if there is any difference because the last time I used this was on a corporate job for a job I was gaffing on. So here we go. I'm going to take a, a reading here and no, it's still pretty much the same. 4,284, that's pretty damn close to 4,300. Pretty damn close uh, to 4,300. We still have that 0.1 magenta. Now if I go in here and if I wanna look at the white balance corrector, 
Um, is it still showing a little bit? Yeah, it's the same exact thing. So that was a case scenario where the calibration didn't really affect it that much, but yeah, it's always good to do if, if, if you remember to do that. So that is a very quick breakdown of how I use a color meter in real world situations because I get a lot of questions about this. I get a lot of questions about how to use the, spec the spectrometer. And um, you know, that's how I use it. I think that is the correct way to do it uh, from all the research and actual Siconic videos that I've watched and the manuals that I've read and just tons of forums that I've read. And plus I've been using this for a, a few years now, right? I think I invested in this during 2020. Uh, this is my second one. Insurance had to replace the last one because I did drop it and it broke, unfortunately, but I was able to get a brand new one just in time for the sale right before it ended. Literally the day before the sale ended on these things, uh, insurance sent out the check and I was able to get this. So uh, me being the Butterfingers at Bart Simpson that I am, if you uh, need some good insurance, then shoot me a DM over on Instagram and I can uh, get you a really good deal through PPA. Some people may not like that, but I think PPA is awesome. I've had them replace lenses, now color meters. Um, it's really simple, fast process. And if you do everything the right way and you're on the up and up, uh, you get a check quite quickly. So I have a deal that I can give to my subscribers um, and I don't get a cut or anything from it. I'm not like an official affiliate of PPA. It's just something cool that they offer to bring in new members. And um, all of my gear is covered and I pay, what do I pay? Like $30 a month, something like that. And you get a really cool magazine every month too. Lots of cool lighting tips. Granted, the magazine is more catered to commercial photography, but there's still some cool lighting stuff to be learned from that. Either way, this video was all about the Spectromaster, Spectrometer, however you want to say it. I, I call it Spectromaster because it literally says that on the meter, but yet I know they're actually called a Spectrometer. Anyways, all that aside, I hope this was a little bit beneficial for you. And I know this is a huge investment. I don't expect everyone to run out and buy this thing. As reluctant as I like to do gaffing jobs, uh, enough of my friends know that I have a little minivan package. So I do quite a bit of gaffing jobs uh, and I've been doing it uh, since like 2020. Um, but you know, anyone that's even been on jobs where I'm the cinematographer, I always have my color meter. I just like it. I, I like having, it, it settles a little bit of that problem with my hue deficiency. It takes a lot of things out of the equation. There's a lot of, there's some guys I've worked with that, you know, laugh and go, Ooh, just use your eyes. And that's great if you come from that school of thought, that philosophy where you can trust your eyes. Uh, I don't care even if you have 20-20 perfect vision and you think you see every color exactly as every other human being does, which by the way, no one does. Our eyeballs are like snowflakes, okay? Uh, so I don't have that kind of arrogance of, oh, let's just trust our eyes because uh, I, I just don't, I just don't. But that's my own thing. If you like to rock that way, then by all means do that and download LUTs from Matteo Bertoli or whoever you want to and yeah just let it up uh, me I, I don't I don't like to do that I, I like to use power grades power grades that I use specifically are Juan Malara this video right now has a Juan Malara power grade I'm not trying to sell you his stuff uh, he doesn't know me I don't know him I have no affiliation with him I don't get any cut from him so I could care less uh, I'm just telling you what I do um, and I've been using his power grades since the pocket 4k days I use it on the Komodo I use it on this uh, yeah, so I mean everyone has their own workflow. Uh, me, again, I don't like to bother myself with color because I just don't, one, I have that issue with my eyeballs. Anyways, now we just keep talking ourselves in circles and that's what happens here when I go off script, uh, which there was no script ever for this video. I just thought, you know what, I get so many questions about this. Let me put out a video on this. Let me try, even though I've put out, uh, I think three videos already, by the way, a big video of mine that got slept on where I really break down every single function and menu of this meter. It was called Color Science for dummies. Of course it got slept on as most of my uh, more highly elevated educational videos do. <laughs> uh, I will put a link to that down in the description below for those of you interested in that because I highly recommend starting there and then I'll put links to some of the other kind of more crappy videos that I did on this but this one is probably the best up to date and then of course color signs for dummies so maybe that should be your next video that you check out. Okay as always thank you all for the support and I got to give a shout out to the members of the Dog Times Patreon the number one supporters of the show and this month's Patreon uh, producer, Jonathan Arroyo. As always, thanks for watching. And for now, that is a wrap. Just do yeah, that. This grab. is my shit, yeah, man. Cool. <laughs> this is dog times. Alright. Bobby, let's see. Uh, he comes in from this way and exits yeah. back out this way. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah.
They're going to come from, they'll be on that side and he'll be on this side.